All right, I'm going to give you kind of a brief overall of how to wire up the box, or for my case, how to wire up the box, or how I'm doing it for a retrofit for Linux CNC. Now, I'm going to say this, and a lot of people aren't going to like it. Don't use stepper motors unless you got an encoder to go with it. Now, I know there's some massive cards that allow you to use an encoder with the stepper motors, and that's all right. But if you're going with stepper motors, you're flying blind. Um, unless you have the, uh, the proper encoders to go with them. So on mine, I've got a NASA 7i77, which is the one that does the servo motor. Since I have servo motors, I'm going to go ahead and use them um, on the original machine. So I've got the NASA card. And I've got a relay set up for the servos. And the servo drivers are up here. That's all four of them. They can hardly see it in this. I know it's used the wrong color. So I'm going to run through each one of the powers, starting from the bottom and going to the top. Top, you have the fuses. This is how it was originally. So you've got the 220 volt fuses up here. And now with this, also, you have the big, um, the big breaker switch on the back of the cabinet. And it's all tied into here. So it was there. I see no reason to move it. It's going to stay. There's no point in moving it. So then I've got that running down here, and it comes to the 220 volt DIN rail. And I've got all the DIN rail on here for the individual volts, and I need to buy dividers. Um, I don't have dividers for the DIN rail yet. Then we've got it going back up, going to the spindle relay here. These are big Allen Baddeley relays. I think they can take something like uh, 220 volt plus. I don't know what the max is on them, but they're, they're more than capable for this. And then that relay goes to the VFD, and then the VFD takes the, the single phase, 220, and makes it three phase. And then that goes up into the spindle. Then we've got the, the 110. 110 would come in here through the bottom and I know it's it's separate it's just um, I don't want to buy separate power supplies just for each individual one of these now the 220 will have a power supply or the 24 volt will have a power supply it's DIN rail mounted um, so we're gonna have the 120 come in from the bottom come to the um, DIN rail portion we have lotted out for it and then that's going to go and it's going to go and run the servos. So then you've got the servo switch, and that runs up to these, and then you go to the individual servos. Now, it's not, um, what would you say, symmetrical with where the servos go out. Some go up top, the Z goes up top, and the other two go down here on the side. I didn't bother in putting them in. Um, then we've got the E stop. Now, the E stop's interesting. The e -stop, your e-stop is connected to the 24 volt logic that's also connected to your MASO card. So you've got it connecting the I.O. on the MASO card so it's now powering that. But what I also did is the e-stop is connected both to the MASO card and to this guy right here, the uh, e-stop relay. And the e-stop relay is what supplies ground for these always to be swift so if you want any of these other two to be running this has to be uh, getting a constant signal otherwise it's going to break it here and it's going to break it down here at the Maso card which will stop it on the, the PC itself so then we've got it and then I've got it bridged off and that's applying the ground to your individual cards here so as long as this one is in contact, it's fine. The second you hit the AD stop, this is not fine. It's going to flip it there, and it's going to flip it there. In a little bit, I'm going to show you how I did that. Then it's gone up, and it's going, this guy is going to the E stop up here off camera, or not quite off camera. You can see that a bit. So that's what's going on with these. Then you've got, oh, for your servos, then the servos go over, and then you've got your filter capacitor here. 
Real quick explanation for people that don't know what a filter capacitor is used for. Um, what it does is it, it kind of levels things out. You know, if you're, you're in your house and you turn on the vacuum cleaner, all the lights dim for just a split second or so. That keeps that from happening. So if your spindle starts up right away and it doesn't have a starter capacitor or it pulls just the right amount, it's going to uh, dim the lights in the shop, assume, oh, depending on how the shop's wired. <coughs> but then it's going to not affect this guy since he's already getting his power and it's already a, a reservoir of power in the capacitor. And then that goes off and it powers the individual servos. So I think that about wraps it up. So one of these little switches is what I'm going to use to uh, for the yeast stock. These are Allen Bradley switches. Quite small little guys. They fit on the inside of a control panel. See, here's the two I have for the e-stop. One of these is going to be wired to the Maso card, and the other one is going to be charged or connected directly to the relay or, in my case, the contactor. So when it presses that, it kills a signal. These are kind of backwards from your normal switches, so there's power coming through these as long as this little button's not pushed. Once this button gets pushed, it uh, breaks the circuit and tells the machine it's gone. That also gives me an advantage because then we can <clears throat> have this guy as a power and then once this flips, this guy over here is going to flip. So it straightens out more than one thing. <clears throat>